Okay, guys, um, if you guys watched my last video, video, you know that I uh, was trying to replace the thermostat on my engine, on my Comanche here, and I figured out that the bottom bolt was broken off in there to begin with, so um, I haven't been able to, it's kind of been sitting here for the last week because I haven't been able to really attack it. Um, so I will, I'll be doing that soon, but, um, I also decided, hey, you know what, while I have my radiator out, I am just going to replace it and update my system from a closed system to an open cooling system, um, which, I mean, pretty much means, like, you see this bottle here? This is a famous bottle, uh, that likes to leak and explode and, and and crack and all that kind of stuff on these Renex engines. When you go for a closed system, which has that kind of a pressure bottle, and you go to a open, it gets rid of that bottle, and you have more of like your standard re reservoir where you can see like your blue or you know coolant and whatnot. Whereas this, it's like brown. <laughs> Overall, it's more beneficial to have an open cooling system so I can have a radiator cap right here to just fill the a radiator with coolant instead of having to bleed it um, and worry about leaks on that on that bottle over there. All right, guys, um, just so I can get you guys caught up, pretty much what you got to do is drain your coolant out, um, which there's a little plug on your radiator, which is probably on that bottom side there, right here, okay? And then I have a manual transmission, so pretty much the only two hoses I'll be worrying about is the top hose and the bottom hose, and the or upper or lower, that's usually what they're labeled. Now if you have, you have an automatic transmission, you'll need two other coolant lines for your transmission, which I do not have, so I do not need to worry about it. Okay, so you have, again, this is the upper arm that goes to the thermostat housing, the lower, which goes to the water pump. So once you get that drained out, you loosen those two, and then you also have to remove this big old black trim top piece that holds it down, which is that piece right there. Once that's out, then you can pretty much lift this guy. Oh, well, you also have to remove your electric fan, lift this guy out and set it over there. Now you see mine, I have a lot more removed again mainly because I have this bolt I'm trying to extract. But uh, you likely will need to remove your serpentine belt if you are replacing the thermostat in here, um, which I am. That, that was the whole start of this project, and then I noticed this was broken. So, And then other than that, you will be deleting and getting rid of this reservoir, or this bottle here, and you'll be deleting the little valve there, this T and all this little stuff here. And you'll pretty much be going 5 eighths and 3 quarter inch hoses straight from the heater core, so the top and bottom right there. Top and bottom, straight to one here and the other one to the thermostat housing, the smaller of the thermostat housing. That's pretty much it, that's where you'll be. Um, and there's other videos where it's actually in, they show you how, what to remove. But just very quickly, just so I have it documented, um, that's that's pretty much what you have to do to remove it. And then once I have the parts in, we can um, f uh, move forward with the uh, installation. All right, um, it is a different day now, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing this guy because my radiator uh, is coming in either tomorrow or the next day. Um, and then I'm also gonna be removing these hoses right here that are still connected, getting, re getting rid of the little valve and the T and all this other stuff. Um, to get it ready for when my all my parts come in. Okay, uh, that took a little bit longer than I thought. Um, Everything came off just fine, except for the two hoses that were directly connected to the heater core. And those I just took my, oh, I tried wiggling them off, um, prying them off the tubes, but they were just on there. So I just cut them off with my razor blade. And these are the two tubes is what I'm talking about right there. They're kind of underneath this piece. I couldn't really get the best grip or angle, but I got those out. Um, and pretty much, it's gonna be much cleaner looking. 
because these, um, this is three quarter, this is five sixteenths, this is, uh, or not five sixteenths, I'm sorry, five eighths, and this is going to go, um, again, one to this guy, and the other one to the housing. So the housing will look like, like that, okay, and then you have this guy on the left, which is going to go, uh, and then same with this guy's going to also go back to the heater core, and then the big ones is going to be the upper hose that goes to my new radiator once it comes in. Then I'm also going to need to buy a uh, 5 six, uh, sixteenths hose uh, that goes for my new radiator cap. Probably, mm, I guess I could go that direction, but to make it cleaner, I'll probably go this way. Maybe that, maybe through here all the way to my new bottle, which this is what the new, new reservoir bottle is going to look like. I do have this already. Um, and it's got to go from this guy all the way back to my new radiator cap. So that'll all be shown when uh, I get my radiator in. All right, guys, here she is, the new radiator. Um, I just ordered one off Amazon. I already came in a couple days ago. And I already forgot what brand it was. But <clears throat> anyways, nonetheless, I went ahead and I did this. If you guys are kind of struggling on where to put this guy, your new reservoir for the open cooling system, um, I've seen some guys stick it in here, but I think he had a Cherokee. Uh, I think this is originally meant for a Cherokee to put this guy like over here somewhere, but the, but the fuse box and everything is in a different area. So I was putting it here because this was where the pressure bottle was before and I just cut a big section out and still use this kind of as like a brace and I'm just using some ties there for now to keep it in place. It's, it's actually pretty sturdy. I mean, not crazy sturdy, but easy for me to remove if I need to get down to any of these spots if I need to. And then here's my tubing that's gonna be running all the way across to my radiator cap, which is gonna be on that side. If you saw my last video, my new housing is on for my thermostat. I have the top one, top hose going to this, going to the coolant uh, neck fill tube here, whatever that's called. And then here's the uh, other side, which this goes to the bottom piece of the heater core, goes to the right. So uh, top to the left, and then bottom one to the right. And then this one is going to go to the upper, which is going to go to that side. So that is going to go straight to there. And then I already have the hose hooked up, but yeah, I got bought a brand new formed fitted hose. That's going to go to here once I really set it down in there. And then we are pretty much good to go. Okay, so now it's kind of in place here. I took off the grill, so there's two little grommets. That's going to be two little pegs that where it sits, so it's kind of in place. And then again, you have the water pump lower tube, which is down here. Again, mine's a manual, so I only need these two, two uh, hoses. And then there's the upper hose, which is going to go technically go like around here as if there's an AC. My old one just had the one as if there was no AC because I technically have no AC. But um, I plan on putting AC, so I got the hose. This hose, I got this hose right here that is meant for the AC. You see how this is gonna connect to here. And then the, uh, I think it's the compressor, I'm not sure. Anyways, again, I'm a novice, but part of the AC component goes here. So this tube is supposed to go around that onto the thermostat housing there. And this is connected here, forms over, connects to there. That one is now connected. Turns out I'm gonna have to find another way to run this or get a longer hose that goes to my overflow there. I don't know, maybe I can run it through here, but I know the AC is gonna be, components are gonna be there, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about this. And the, and the electric fan will be here and the shroud will be here. So I'm going to probably put the fans in and see what it looks like. Okay, so there is a modification you'll have to do, at least in, uh, if you have a Jeep Comanche like mine and your top plate is like mine. I still have to probably cut it a little bit more, but you're going to have to cut this out. I didn't do a very good job. I don't have a grinder with me. I had to use a Sawzall and it kind of came out crappy, but I got, I'm going to clean this up. But pretty much... You'll have to cut this section out in order for the radiator cap to be able to twist off and have access to it. Otherwise, obviously, it's going to be like halfway underneath it. Unless you're able to find one that has a longer 
a 90 degree angle that pops out a little closer to your box here. So I think this will probably uh, make do for mine. If anything, probably right there might be just, just fine. Um, and uh, anyways, yeah, make sure that you have your two little grommets again in there and your hose is hooked up. I'm gonna put my grill back on and start putting the screws in to secure my plate. All right, guys, well, unfortunately, I was filling up my system and somehow I, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe, maybe the gasket, maybe the bolts, I didn't tighten it, I don't know. But my water pump started leaking when I started filling up the coolant from the radiator cap. And so I started taking things back apart and I am gonna be replacing my water pump. Um, so my water pump is a GMB water pump, OE. And it's, uh, if you don't know where it goes, it goes right here. Here it is. You see how I started filling it up with the new green coolant. So I, I just removed my old water pump um, and the old gasket that was on there. And I cleaned up this housing uh, with a razor blade or with a wire brush. Um, and now I'm going to add my new water pump in. And there's four screws, okay, four bolts I mean. Uh, and then there's also these two bolts here that secure it to your power steering, this whole section there, here. But the four screws that make, make the seal is gonna be right there. I'm not sure what that big guy is, but that is also on the new water pump and the old water pump. I think that's just like a bypass where water fluid can also get into there, which is the fuel neck that connects to this hose here. I mean, a fuel neck, I'm sorry, the coolant. Uh, tube neck that uh, connects to this guy. Okay, so this is pretty much all you need. Your gasket here, the water pump, <clears throat> and then some uh, sealant. I got the ultra bl black gasket maker oil resistant sealant, uh, silicone. And um, I was told by one of my buddies to go ahead and put a bead around here and kind of make a thin little layer and then put the gasket on, make sure it's in place, lined up with the holes and put another little bead of silicone. And then as you're putting it in, I saw it's best to put a bolt through one of them and hold it while you're putting it in uh, so that this gasket doesn't go on accident. So it's nice and lined up and then do a cross pattern on the, on the uh, tightening of the bolts. Okay, I put the gasket on a thin layer, kind of a little bead around the, the lip right here where I'm assuming that's where the seal is gonna have to go. So um, now I'm gonna set a setter on in there and then uh, fill her up. All right, all four, are, or I guess all six are in, if you include the two to the power steering. Um, I bought this and this, I assumed this was gonna fit because it said Wrangler and Cherokee. And I know a lot of these are like the same. And I thought I saw somewhere that that would be the same, the little piece that kind of form fits back. I can't find one that just fits the Comanche, but so, I mean, it's not the right thread size into the water pump, so it's 3 eighths. So I just had, I just got some galvanized pipe and I'm gonna do that, do it that way. It might rust, but whatever, it's good enough for now. I gotta get this, I gotta get this girl going so I have another vehicle, cause all, right, all I have right now is the Forerunner. So, all right, um, now I'm gonna go ahead and fill her up here and, uh, uh, see if she leaks. Okay, so from what I've heard, I don't have a funnel, so don't make fun of me. But these are supposed to keep burping and then until the leg goes down, you do that a couple of times and then you're going to go ahead and run the, uh, the uh, engine. So everything starts to circulate. I think I'm gonna start her up. I put an entire gallon in there. I got the concentrate, <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna dilute it myself with the water. So I've already poured the whole gallon in. Now I've done probably close to a gallon, maybe a little less of just cups of water. <clears throat> and uh, I think we might be good to go. All right, guys. I forgot I had to put everything back together, but I got the belt back on, the pulley back on. Put the shroud on. I haven't put the electric fan in yet. I want to turn it on, let it let it idle for a little bit, um, make sure everything is going and it's cooling right, and make sure the belt is good. And then that's pretty much it. So that's how you uh, upgrade your cooling system. 
Uh, oh, one last thing I forgot. I decided to run, since I didn't have enough hose to get to it that cap that way, I actually ran it back there. I need to, I need to put a zip tie to it, to up there, but uh, up against the firewall there, all the way over here, underneath, underneath the wire harness, everything, underneath the vacuum lines, all the way to right here. So it's actually gonna be tucked in like, like that, so I can put my electric fan right in there. And that'll be my overflow all the way into my reservoir bottle. Now I've also seen some people put it here. I might be able to squeeze it in there, but I don't know. Or I might need to get a different bottle or relocate these guys further this way to kind of open up this space here. I might be able to squeeze a bottle in there. But anyways, that's for a different day. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, kind of a hect uh, hectic process because of the whole thermostat bolt, uh, housing bolt and everything. Um, but got my two lines, that bottle is gone, new radiator is installed, uh, it's a third, it's a three row radiator, um, should be getting some extra cooling going on, and it's now an open system, I can fill it up here whenever I want, so, alright guys, uh, I will see you in the next one.